Good morning. Uh, my name is Andy Versteeg. I'm one of the elders at this church. Um, I would like to, first of all, welcome you to our worship service today. It's a contemporary service. We would like to especially welcome those from St. Andrews. We pray that this will be an hour of refreshment and spiritual joy. Please make yourself known to us by signing our register near the church door as you enter our sanctuary. There is a creche for infants and toddlers staffed by volunteers. That's available to the door to my left. Uh, there is a fellowship time after the service in the church hall. Coffee and uh, small snacks. Please come and join us after. Uh, we'd like to uh, thank Marika Donner, Hugh Go, Matthew Culp, Leah Robinson, Liam Robinson, sorry, and Brian Way for his leadership uh, for their leadership today in this uh, morning service. Uh, Dr. Dent is offering three services during the Lent to facilitate greater worship and devotion during this session. The uh, bulletin contains a schedule of all the upcoming services through this Easter, ser Easter time. Uh, we are still in need of volunteers for coffee hour. If you are available Sunday mornings after the services and would like to help, please sign the roster at the door at the church. Uh, sorry, at the kitchen. Uh, the annual Flipper dinner is fast approaching. There are some notes in there in the bulletin for your uh, uh, perusal. Please, uh, uh, where you are able to help, please do. Uh, AED training. It is time for us to, uh, for you, to train for use of the AED. Uh, some people were trained last year, some could not. Uh, some are expiring. Uh, those who are interested, uh, please see Kathy McKay. Uh, after the service uh, to uh, coordinate when this can happen. Limited number of spots in each class, so please uh, uh, make your uh, uh, intentions known early. And last, uh, on a sadder note, uh, Betty Best, who uh, worshipped with us for many years, she was now living in uh, Etobicoke, she passed away on Thursday past. Uh, she was an active member of our uh, WA and uh, we will miss her. Thank you. Some of you might be wondering, what is a contemporary service like? Well, it's the regular service with a little bit different music in it. That's my quick, quick answer. So uh, the liturgy isn't too much different. Uh, we have, a, uh, we have a, an opening worship set. That means a longer period of music with more contemporary, uh, n newer music. But some of them will have words that you'll, I think, know. And uh, basically what we do is we just take time in a musical set to prepare our hearts and to offer worship. And there will be things that are repeated, as in all songs, there are, are repetitions. Uh, but when, when, the, when the music says, lift him higher, and says it several times, the idea is that in that moment of worship, we're all lifting the Lord higher in our hearts, in our lives, and in our minds. So it's great to be with you today, and in this particular uh, uh, time of the year. It's, it's Lent, and in that sense, uh, we are going to take out the Presbyterian Church of Canada purple insert, uh, the fourth Sunday in Lent, and I'm going to invite uh, David to come up at this time. 
and uh, he'll lead us as the leader, the L, and we'll be the people in the purple. This journey to Jerusalem is long. We follow Jesus in the heat and dust. This is a wilderness journey. We are not comfortable, we are not content, but we are faithful and we persevere. We are pilgrims on a journey. We are travelers on the road. God's people are familiar with wilderness. After Egypt, they wandered in hunger and thirst, confused and tired, waiting for the promised land. Our destination is different. We aim for Jerusalem where it all ends and begins again. Let us pray in unison. God of the wilderness, give us strength for wandering times. When we stray and grieve, hunger and thirst, you have promised to make water spring up in the desert. Quench our thirst, Feed us with manna, strengthen our tired limbs. Amen. So we'll be uh, uh, encouraging you to stand, but we know that not everybody can stand for 10 to 15 minutes, which is probably about the, what the three songs will last. So just feel free to stand for as long as you can to sit when you need to sit. Is that... Is that that's just a, a kind of a, a, a practical thing. Uh, let's stand together to worship the Lord with the song Stronger. There is an insert, and we'll try to go by that as best we can.
that you are stronger and you can come and meet us in a special way this day together, all of us here in this place. We invite your Holy Spirit to do your work in us. Help us as we sing your praises to know you anew, to give ourselves to you through Christ, we pray.
And Lord, we move uh, from the words of those today who want to worship you, from what they see in creation, from the northern lights, to the vast deserts, to the amazing oceans, across the mountains and in the valleys, across the face of the earth, we worship you this day. We come to you, the living God, the Creator, the one who knows us by name, the one who created the vast expanse of space, the millions of light years, and knows our planet, and knows us, and knows our city, and loves us. And Lord, we acknowledge that often in response to your love, we rebel, we continue in our brokenness, we continue to sin against your best and highest ways for us. And so we take a moment to confess our sins, any actions or inactions against your will and way. We confess them now quietly to the Lord. Forgive us, O oh God, when we are unkind to one another, when we hold past sins against one another, when we do not approach one another with grace and love, but rather with judgment, condemnation. Help us, O oh God, as we seek to know you, as we seek to be kind with those we walk with in these days and patient. Change us on the inside by your Holy Spirit, we pray. When we are hungry in parts of Lent, where we are doing extra actions as a part of our Lenten worship to you, remind us that you have accomplished our relationship with you by your uh, sacrifice and by your resurrection. We thank you that in this day, we can start anew with you. We can have the fresh assurance of forgiveness at your hand. That we can name your name and agree to walk in your ways as never before. So we trust you this day, Lord. Give us what we need inside, grace and peace, to choose you anew this day. And Lord, we thank you that your disciples asked you how to pray. And so we say uh, the prayer you taught them using words of debts and debtors. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and glory, forever and ever. Amen. Boys and girls, your hymn is number 201. We come to ask your forgiveness, O Lord. Lent in hymn 201 in the book of praise.
Come up, boys and girls. It's your time now. Welcome, boys and girls. Nice to have you today. I've got something in my bag, and we'll talk about that in a second. But, uh, oh, come on, keep on coming. Keep on coming. Don't give up. Well, boys and girls, how many, how many boys and girls like snow? Raise your hands. How many like ice? Adults, how many like snow? How many like ice? Skate on it. Just checking. Okay, we're all together. We're all together on this. It's, a, it's, a, it's springtime in Newfoundland, and uh, it's good to be together. Um, boys and girls, there's a special person who has a birthday today. I think we should sing him happy birthday. Okay? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Also, welcome to the team. Good to have you for the next year, God willing, and the creek don't rise and all that. Uh, boys and girls, I've got something here I want to put on, and maybe you know what it is. Do you know what it is before I take it out of the bag? Sometimes people know that before I take it out of the bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not quite a tickle trunk, but it's in that direction. Yeah, that's okay. Here it comes. Here it comes. Okay. Everybody know what that is? Uh, and you know the proper place to put it is always there. <laughs> Anybody know what that's called? You same time, yes, what's it called? Um, a telescope. A telescope. You're, you're in the right direction. I, I like your courage. Go ahead. Okay. A stethoscope, yes. A stethoscope. And what, is it, what do you use this for? Anybody know? Listen to the heart. Have you had that done to you? You have? And, and, and how, do you, how do you use it? You, you, uh, you put the... the Jennifer wants to use it, I can tell. You, you, you put the little things in the ear, which makes me not hear anything through my microphone, for one thing. And then you put it up to her, and then we see if I'm still alive. And I get to hear... It, it goes like this. Here, I have to take this off. It, it sounds like this. because I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> See? And, 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 and so doctors use this to listen inside. Why do they want to listen inside you, do you think? If, to see if your heart's healthy. Anybody else? That's, there's lots of right answers. My medical friends will correct me at the end if they need to be. Sometimes you're breathing. Sometimes you're... Sometimes my, my lungs sound like... <laughs> sometimes like that, which isn't very nice, but that's how they go sometimes. And so doctors can listen inside you for your, how your heart is and how, you, how your breathing is and, and other stuff inside that I don't even know about because I'm, I'm not that kind of doctor. I tell you. But uh, it's amazing. God has more than this. He, he can see right through us. He can hear what's going on inside our heads. And instead of being scared of that, we need to be comforted by the fact that He loves us, He wants our best, He knows what's happening inside us, and He wants us to be truthful and honest what's going on, no matter what. So we're here uh, in part to encourage you in Sunday school to know, the, to know Jesus, to know the Bible, to know how to follow Him. And today I think we're doing some music with you, so I'm really happy you're here today. So let's bow our heads, close our eyes, and, we'll, and you say the prayer after me, everyone, please. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving me. And hearing what's going on inside. And knowing me. And loving me still. Help me to follow you. To love you, Jesus. 
all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you guys. Great to have you today. forward. God bless you for helping us uh, with 1 Samuel 16 and Ephesians 5, the, the lectionary readings for the fourth Sunday in Lent. The first reading comes from 1 Samuel chapter 16 verses 1 to 13. You can find this on your pew Bibles, pages 421 to 422. The story of Samuel when he anoints David. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears about it, he will kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled. When they met him, they asked, Do you come in peace? Samuel replied, Yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and then to the sac- and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab. And he thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things human beings look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shammah pass by, but Samuel said, Nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? They are still the youngest, Jesse answered. He is tending the sheep. Samuel said, Send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent and had him brought in. He was glowing with fine health and had a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him. This is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came on David in power. Samuel then went to Ramah. The New Testament reading is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 to 14. And this starts at the bottom of page 1744. For you were once darkness, but now you are the light of the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists of all goodness, righteousness, and truth, and find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, Wake up, sleeper, 
rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's continue to read the scriptures. Uh, the next psalm uh, being one I think most of you know very well. Uh, that's the 23rd psalm. If you turn there in the Pew Bible, not because you might have it memorized, because a lot of us do, but we'll use this uh, newer version, which has a few changed words, but I think is still the comforting, peaceful psalm that we know it to be, that we often read in times of loss. Psalm 23. Let's read it in unison, please. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And the gospel reading is from uh, John chapter 9. It's, it's, uh, it's a bit long. But it's uh, the wonderful story of uh, uh, Jesus healing the man born blind. And um, we don't read much from John. I don't know if you've ever noticed that about the lectionary. The lectionary has a three-year cycle. That means we get all of Matthew, all of Mark, all of Luke. And what happened to John, right? So this is uh, why we, I think they put in the last few weeks the gospel from John. As he went along... Jesus saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with his saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him. Wash in the pool of Siloam, this word which means scent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? And some claimed that he was. Others said, No, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes open, they asked. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and I washed and then I could see. Where is this man, they asked him. I don't know, he said. And they brought to the, to the Pharisees the man who had been, born, had been blind. And now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Therefore the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed, and now I see. And some of the Pharisees said, well, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others asked, how can a sinner perform such signs? So they were divided. And then they turned again to the, the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, he is a prophet. They still did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son, they asked? Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it that now he can see? We know he is our son, the parents answered. And we know he was born blind, but how he can see, or who opened his eyes, we don't know. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders who already had decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. That was why his parents said, he is of age. Ask him. The second time they summoned the man who had been blind, give glory to God and tell the truth, they said. We know this man is a sinner. He replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. Then they asked him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? 
And he answered, I've told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples also? Then they hurled insults at him and said, You are this fellow's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. The man answered, Now that's remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. To this they replied, You were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked, tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have seen him now. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. And Jesus said, for judgment I have come into this world, so that the blind will see and, those who will see, and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, what? Are we blind too? And Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin, but now that you claim that you can see, your guilt remains. Amen. And may God help us to understand this and the other passages we read for this day. 204 is the hymn, Thou didst leave thy throne. 204. a doctor 
that are reverent, I won't put the stethoscope back on, you can visualize that. You know I'm not an MD, there are a few of those here, and thank you for being here, but a uh, PhD, as you probably know, but here's what I'm, where I'm thinking about bringing together spiritual health and some principles from the physical health realm. You may be aware that medicine has progressed from dissection of corpses for the purpose of learning about anatomy and physiology to exploratory surgeries to what is called less and less invasive diagnostic tools. So instead of cutting you open, that's what they call invasive, to look at your bones, doctors take x-rays. And this technology has been around a long time, but because of radiation, as you know, in this procedure, they don't want you to have x-rays too much because then that produces further different illnesses. Then, uh, and this is, this is in chronological order, but, but then certainly sonography, ultrasound t uh, technology has allowed us to look inside the body just under the skin and right into the torso. So many of you have seen babies in utero, right, long before birth, that, that kind of 3D black and white image. Uh, in fact, I think we even still have a, a picture of Stacy, uh, who's our, um, well, she'll be 24 this year. So that technology allows us to see below the surface for both the healthy and the unhealthy parts. And you know we've developed other uh, imaging devices such as uh, the MRI, the magnetic resonance imaging, and computerized tomography, which some call CT scans, others call CAT scans. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with uh, cats, so. And both of these technologies give more of a three-dimensional image for those structures underneath the skin and color as well. And one person on the internet suggested CT scans do not show tendons and ligaments very well, but MRIs do. And this person went on to say the CT is preferred for pneumonia, cancer, and bleeding in the brain, while the MRI shows tumors better. And of course, beyond that, if you watch movies and TV, science fiction has a little thing in the doctor's hand, and they can see it all before anything, any touch occurs. All of this is simply to say that it's better to be able to see into the structures of the body below the surface without having to do damage to the skin uh, to do uh, some surgery or some other invasive technique. You know this is also true in treating heart conditions which uh, not that many years ago were extremely frightening and severely invasive. And that, not that they're not still frightening to some degree, but uh, I remember in our church in California, uh, we had a prayer group specifically for heart-related, like support of heart-related injuries and people and their families. Now, as you probably know, they try to put a wire or cable up the artery from the leg or groin and do some repairs directly in the heart in that way, and it's done dozens of times over the health sciences and St. Clair's every day. It's, it's way less invasive, uh, invasive and heals much faster. Now, these are things that most of you know. Of course, your own doctor needs to talk with you if you're thinking about your specific case. But I'm here to today to talk with you about your spiritual needs, not your physical ones. I'm here to today to remind you that God does indeed see into us below the surface, below what we present to others. You may, this, you, you may know that story of how the young shepherd David was chosen to be Saul's successor, which we read from 1 Samuel 16. You remember how frightened the prophet Samuel was to choose a new king and to anoint him before the old king was out of office. And you can understand the politics of that. But Samuel obeyed God, went to a certain family's home, Jesse's home, and Samuel knew that God had chosen one of Jesse's sons to be the next king. He didn't know how many sons Jesse had, and he didn't know which one God had chosen. And so you know the story of how what I guess we call the male beauty pageant proceeds. Jesse brings out Eliab, who is a fine, good-looking, strong young man, probably ripped, as the young folks say today, with muscles and features all in the right places. And just as Samuel is about to bring out his oil to anoint this eldest son who had all the rights in that culture, all the benefits, what does God do? God says, no. God stops Samuel's thoughts with his own. God reveals himself as a skilled cardiologist who uses non-invasive diagnostic tools. That means he tells Samuel that he doesn't look on the outside, but on the inside. He looks at the heart. And the heart in Old Testament literature is not so much the pump or the electrical circuit. It's the place that sums up the essence of the person. That language is also used in the New Testament where people are encouraged to give their hearts 
to give themselves a totality of who they are to the Lord Jesus Christ. Giving your heart means giving yourself, your ambitions, your dreams, your relationships, your property, your abilities, everything of who you are to the Lord. Which every Sunday, if I don't say it or Dave doesn't say it or whoever's in the pulpit where you are, make sure you hear it. Give yourself anew this day, unconditionally, to the Lord. And record your decision if that's something that you haven't done recently. God knows and sees into us when we put our careers first, our money, our financial security first, before our faith. God knows when we put our reputation or our desires or our plans before his own. God sees into who we are beyond the Olympic sports exterior, or its opposite, uh, to what's going on inside us. He saw Jesse's sons. He sees into us. He sees beyond our games. He sees beyond our competitions. He sees beyond our pride. He sees beyond our hang-ups and our hurts and resentments. There is only fear when we try to hide, just as they did in the garden after they knew they had chosen the rebellious path. So Samuel sees Eliab, Abidat, Nadab, Shama, on the other four sons that aren't named there of Jesse's sons. And Samuel asks a surprising question after seeing seven sons, because the king isn't going to be the seventh son of the seventh son. Samuel's looking for number eight. And Jesse says, yeah, yeah, there's one more. But, you know, he's out looking after sheep. Probably isn't smelling very nice. You know, you don't really want to meet him. But I can arrange that if you want. And Samuel says, right now, please. And then David comes into the house. And he's handsome too, but more importantly, Samuel hears God saying, this is the one. That was Samuel's job as a prophet. And what his name means, listening to God, hearing God, Samuel. It is our job to be that kind of person as well, to, to listen to God, to trust what's happening in our, for our future, our futures. And Samuel anoints David right there. The pouring of the oil onto someone is a picture, a symbol of the Holy Spirit being given in a special way for a special cause. And this is also true when we anoint with oil in the Presbyterian Church for healing. It's mandated in the book of James chapter 5. If you're interested, you can read that. And we jump then quickly to the story of the blind man in John chapter 9. It's an amazing account of healing and it's too long to go through detail by detail. But... But it really is about choosing to follow Jesus Christ or not. There was a mistaken concept uh, that that Jesus corrects. um, A mistaken concept both by the disciples and by many today about why this man had been born blind. They asked that question. Remember the question? Was it because his parents sinned or because he sinned that he was born blind? And those questions were addressed to Jesus. And Jesus simply said... It was so God could be glorified, so that the work of God could be displayed in him. Verse 3. And may I simply say that is the reason, that is the reason why we too must often bear challenges, health issues, pain and suffering. We too are called to be those in whom the work of God is displayed. And I know that doesn't answer all the questions around why we must bear what we must. But I hope that's a partial answer for whatever you're going through. It's also a question of our dignity when we come to God. Are we willing to have Jesus spit in the dirt, apply the mud to what needs to be healed in our lives, or is that simply too offensive? It wasn't too offensive for the blind man, who is, by the way, never named in this passage. He's one of those no-name folks in the Bible. He simply received the healing and trusted Jesus and never quite understood why his parents were worried about their synagogue membership, nor did he understand why the religious leaders, that is the clergy of the day, were so quick to disbelieve when he had experienced the power of God, the healing through Jesus Christ. Later on, the formerly blind man would meet Jesus because he hadn't seen him before, obviously. He understands that Jesus is the one sent from God And he worships Jesus, as we do today. And Jesus sums up the story by saying that he has come into the world for judgment, not condemnation, like it says in in John 3, 3, 16 and 17. 
that judgment is that the blind will see and those who think they can see without Jesus will find themselves blind and some of the religious leaders the clergy of that day were offended and say are we blind too but Jesus simply says if you think you can see without me then you too are unable to see and sometimes I know I claim that I can see I don't need the Lord I don't need God and sometimes we say that Maybe not consciously. But the reason why we love the 23rd Psalm, the Good Shepherd Psalm at funerals, I think is because we need the peace of the Lord. Because particularly when we realize all of us, 100% will die someday, we need to be led to the quiet waters and we need to be restored. So if that's your desire today, Now's your moment. Take a moment. Allow the Lord's non-invasive diagnostic into your life. Let him look at your heart. Speak to you about your heart condition. Sometimes we're probably just fine. Other times we need an immediate AED. That was talked about in the announcements. You know, the automatic external defibrillator. Sometimes the heart goes and does funny things, uh, arrhythmias and and tachycardias and all these other fancy words that mean something. And and the machine, when they put it on you, figures out what you need and you don't need. And there's one on the wall just out here, just so everybody knows. But sometimes in our spiritual lives, we need that too. We need God to give us a moment in our busy lives so that we can give him back our heart condition, spiritual heart condition. To listen to God's voice of peace and care, his honest voice that tells you what you need to do to follow God. So with this in mind, let us pray. And Lord, you know our hearts. You know us. You don't need the fancy equipment. You just see it. So help us to hear your voice, your voice of love and mercy and care as we seek to give back our lives to you. And all of that means we give back our church, our churches to you, the movement that bears your name, Christ, in this city. And we trust you in these days. In Jesus' name, amen. We do want to take up an offering today, and uh, we also uh, bring food items to the Bridges to Hope. The the cart will come forward. That's what that cart's about. Um, If you're wanting to give your offering to St. Andrews, we assure you that we'll make sure they get over back to wherever those offerings go, not into your buildings, but wherever they go appropriately. And... uh, So we give to God our gifts, tithes, and offerings at this time, and trust God with all that we are.
you that we can give back a portion to say that we love you, we love your way here in this place, in this city. Help us, we pray, as we seek to honor you with our lives, with our properties, with all that we are, our influence, our reputation. Help us to use all to glorify your name, to spread your good news here in St. John's, across Newfoundland and Labrador, across Canada and to the ends of the earth. Amen. time of prayers is a time to simply be grateful and to pray for others. Thanksgiving and intercession. It's a time that I invite you and leave space for you to do that in your lives. It's not just me praying up here. It's for you and all of us together to lift our prayers of gratitude and our prayers of intercession for others. We want to remember Betty Best's family uh, as uh, she moved to Toronto and, and has had only had health problems and then passed away. It's, uh, it's difficult, I'm sure, for, for those who are left behind and we need to pray for them. We we'll pray for uh, wisdom on the steeple, St. Andrews, for the crane operators and others who will be helping us figure out uh, what's going on because I don't certainly know. I've seen the pictures, thanks to Bruce and others, but, uh, but there it is. So let's, uh, with these things in mind, and remembering the families of the Malaysian aircraft, and remembering the Crimea and, and the South Sudan, and all the other things that have been in the last few weeks in our prayers, uh, let's do that as well. Let us pray. And Lord, we quietly come before you, recognizing that we all need to be more grateful, grateful for the relative health that we have, the, the will, the choice to be here this day. the mental ability, the, all the things that we often take for granted, Lord, allows us to be sitting where we are, talking to you. Thank you. We know you bring many people to mind during these times of prayer. And we certainly think of the best family at this time for your mercy and care over them. We know there are many others that we want to pray for right now. Those who are sitting next to us, close to us. Those in front of us and behind us. Lord, help them to choose your way and your will in their lives to understand what that means for their daily living. And so we intercede for those you bring into our minds and we quietly take this time to do so, whether they be here or across the face of the planet or anywhere in between. We draw them to you at this time. You know these people that we mention to you way better than we do. You see right inside. Go beyond all the things on the outside that we sometimes do to influence others. We thank you that you're going to care for us in much better ways than we care for each other. 
forgive us, Lord, where we have hurt one another between the two congregations. Forgive us, Lord, where we have failed in loving each other. Give us patience and kindness in these days. We trust you for the evaluation of the steeple and your, your mercy over those who are making the important decisions and how to proceed, the crane operators and others. Help us, Lord. We have so much to learn. So we look to you again this day, thanking you and trusting you. Your mercy upon those parts of the world that we mentioned, Crimea, Ukraine, Russia, South Sudan, wherever that airline, uh, <clears throat> wherever the physical evidence is of the airline that's gone. Be with those families that are still struggling, we pray. Help them to draw close to you in their time of need. And all of us together, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Closing, uh, our closing song is a Cornerstone, which you probably won't know the music, but I think you will know the words. And if that doesn't make sense, uh, we'll just stand together and do the best we can. Thanks so much.
Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the friendship and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.